Okay, before we proceed further, let's get one thing clear. I'm talking about two types of variables. One categorical variable, which means variables which have only a few categories in them, like yes or no, malignant or benign, high, low or medium, etc. But it need not necessarily be a text or string field. Your categories could be one and two. So it's not that a categorical variable cannot be numeric. So you could have numeric categories as well. The other type of variables we are dealing with is continuous. Continuous variables are always numeric. As I mentioned in last video, linear regression expects both dependent and independent variables to be continuous. Suppose you have an independent variable called gender in your data set. It takes three values, one, two and three to represent each gender. This is a numeric variable, it takes value 1, 2 and 3, it's a numeric variable, but it's not a continuous variable. So an equation for a y variable like y is equal to 8.32 into gender will not make any sense at all because it is not a continuous variable. You cannot multiply a gender value by some number, so it will not make any sense. So here it is a numeric value, but it is just a category. Hence this variable has to be converted to a continuous variable by a process called a dummy coding, which we shall uh, see during the hands-on. Okay, now we'll move on. We'll look at a few concepts in more detail. The so first one, multicollinearity. Multicollinearity exists when some predictor variables are correlated with each other. So if there is multicollinearity, the regression coefficients are unreliable. So there could be cases where the predictor variable has a positive relation with the target, but the regression coefficients turn out to be negative. This is an indication of multicollinearity. Okay, let me explain this with an example. Suppose you want to predict the salary of an employee. You look for what are your independent variables. So you finalize on two variables, age and experience. So using age and experience, you try to predict the salary. You build a model. It comes out to be, the equation comes out to be salary equal to 2 into age minus 3 into experience. Okay, now a word on how you interpret your regression coefficients. Before we go into our salary example. Uh, so, if your uh, regression equation is y equal to 2 plus pi x1 plus 10 x2, for example. You can infer from this equation that both x1 and x2 have a positive relationship with y. That is, if x1 increases, y increases. If x2 increases also, y increases because my equation is y is equal to 5x1 plus 10x2. Okay, how much will it increase? So that will be answered by the coefficient. Since y equal to 5x1 plus 10x2, if x1 increases by 1 unit, y increases by 5 units. Similarly, if x2 increases by 1 unit, y increases by 10 units. That is how you interpret your regression coefficient. Now let's come back to our salary equation. Salary equal to 2 into age minus 3 into experience. Now we have got this equation. Now looking closely into this equation, you are surprised. Since it gives a negative relation between experience and salary. You expect that higher the experience, higher the salary. So now you are getting a negative relationship. Then you notice age and experience are highly correlated. So generally higher the experience, higher the age, right? So having two correlated variables distorts the coefficients. The coefficients become unreliable even though the equation may produce fairly accurate predictions of the salary. This is what is meant by this point. Clear? So now what you'll have to do is you'll have to drop one independent variable from the model building. As I mentioned earlier, you test the or you compute the correlation of all x variables among each other to check for multicollinearity. If there is multicollinearity, you decide based on your domain knowledge which variable to draw from the model building. In this case, I feel experience is a better criteria to measure salary than age. Hence, I will drop age and build the model again. There is something called variance inflation factor which is used to measure multicollinearity easily. The variance of greater than 4 can be taken to indicate that there is a multicollinearity. 
it is not very feasible to calculate VIF using Excel. So we won't be going into that in detail. So next concept, ordinary least squares method. I mentioned earlier that regression coefficients are estimated using ordinary least squares method. What this method means is this. Once you have plotted X against Y, you attempt to draw a straight line which connects these points best. So you can draw multiple straight lines actually, like this, like this. So you need to find the line that best fits your data now. To find this, we compute the error for each point. So based on this line, my Y value should be here, while it is actually here. This difference is known as error. It is a difference between the actual value and the predicted value. So the predicted value is what is shown by the straight line. Okay, now take a square of this error for all records and add the square of this errors. Okay, the line that gives the minimum value for the sum of errors is the line of best fit. This procedure to identify the line of best fit is called ordinary least squares method. Okay, next one. Linear regression makes a few assumptions about the data in order to do the model building. First one, the model should be linear. Ordinary least squares method will perform very poorly when you attempt to fit a straight line through a non-linear relation. Second, there should be no multicollinearity. As I mentioned, if there is multicollinearity, though the model may produce a good accuracy, the coefficients are not reliable. Third, the variance of residuals should be constant. So we will see what it means during our hands-on. So this brings us to the end of this video. We are ready to get into the hands-on part now.